handiwork, sir. In the beginning, there was chaos. What happened to Saskia? She's alive. Wounded from our scrap, but alive. She impaled herself on a tree, and then I had to use that dagger. But she'll make it. Mountain air is good for a dragon's hide. You're the most noble human I know, Gwynblade. I'm no human. I'm glad you reminded me. My hatred for the species abated for a moment. What about Letho? Strange thing. He sits in the Temerian's former camp. I believe he awaits you. How do you know? I saw him. He's got Triss. Let's go. Tell me what happened here on the way. While you were fighting Saskia, the city was staged to a bloody spectacle. The players? There were many. At first it was a hunt for the traitors, but it soon turned into a hunt for all mages. And there were a few skirmishes between Kedweni, Redanian, and Temerian troops. Rape, pillage, and murder. Not necessarily in that order. The pastimes of the Order's pious knights. And the regular troops soon followed suit. The kings, with their choice units, left the city just after the dragon attacked. And the Nilf Guardians? Remained neutral. That is to say, they shot anyone who dared approach them. <laughs> when we're done with you, you'll be a lump of whimpering meat. Kill the non-human. the summit ended. We hid in one of the houses, but they found us. They cut off both my sister's hands so she wouldn't cast spells, but I managed to escape. They caught me here. Let's go, Gwynblade. This is madness. Luck Mween has changed. That's what it looks like now. something. Imperial troops. Long live the Emperor! Long live the Emperor! Yeah! <laughs> 
I managed to sneak into the Nilfgaardian camp. It was relatively quiet there. Then I saw Letho leading Triss out. They let him go? No one dared stop him. I followed him. I think he noticed me, but didn't seem to care. Once the fighting died down, he went to the former Temerian camp. Is Triss all right? Yes. Letho defended her from marauders. Stop, Yorvith. I'm going alone. Why? This is between the two of us. Take care of Triss until I return. Your choice. Mine, indeed. There's one more thing you need to know. Nilfgaard's armies have crossed the Yoruga. War is inevitable. Va fail, Gwynblade. Don't get killed. Farewell, Yorvith. If I don't return within the hour, find Saskia and leave without me. Are you all right? Yes. He saved me from the Nilfgaardians. And defended me from the troops. It's time to end this. Yorvith's waiting. I'll catch up with you soon. Geralt, he knows a lot. I know, Triss. That's why we need to talk. Don't get killed, Witcher. I won't. Sheila's megascope. Mm-hmm. My final prank. I switched the diamonds. The one in the megascope has a flaw. Minute. But just large enough to warp the teleport. The Emperor's magic theorists assured me the effect would be spectacular. I let her escape. You're heartless. You've no idea what the royal witch hunters have in store for her. A lot of pain for a long time. I don't doubt it. So, ready to lay your cards out on the table? No matter the game, there comes a point when all the players need to show their cards. I love that moment. But first... Vodka. I suppose my throat's a little dry. In that case, let's drink to old friendships. <sighs> Recovered your memory yet? Not entirely. Remember how we first met? Yeah. I saved your life. Couldn't think of a nicer way to pay me back? Frankly, I couldn't. I mean, taking care of another man's woman, Yennefer. I can't fathom what you saw in her, but I suppose there's no accounting for taste. The Winter Solstice 1270. Middenvern. The Night of Magic. Letho wasn't lying. The hunt had stopped. At the hanged man's tree, the spectral riders selected from among those they had taken. Yennefer was among them. A wraith cannot be killed, only driven away. Every witcher knows that. Yet the riders fell beneath the blows of our witcher's blades. Crimson blood flowed from under their dead men's armor. We could not kill them all. 
They were simply too many. A stalemate. He was different from all other elves. There was no shame in his gaze. He had never suffered persecution. He had endured no massacres. Humans had not taken his land. This elf was not of this world. He was an invader. We struck a deal. My soul for that of Yennefer. He agreed without hesitation. Back with me, friend. Got the feeling you left for a minute. Memories. Remember the hanged man's tree and the wild hunt. Remember the exchange. Me for Yennefer. So, cards out on the table. Unless you chase me all that way just to kill me. I chased you for lots of reasons. You owe me some explanations to start with. Let's say I do. Tell me about Yennefer. What happened after I departed? She was feverish for several days. Delirious. In agony. We thought that was it. She was on her way out. Somehow she recovered. But even then she was disoriented. Amnesia like you. What then? Well, the woman turned out to be quite a character. Throwing temper tantrums. Trying to seduce Ox. Trying to drive a wedge between us. After you so nobly sacrificed yourself, we thought it would be dumb just to leave her somewhere. She wouldn't have survived more than a month. The whims and vigor of the Duchess, but she was just a sorceress with no memory. We were in the heart of the Empire. And as I'm sure you know, Geralt, in Nilfgaard, Mages who behave like that either drop their bad habits quickly or are drawn and quartered by horses in the middle of Victory Square. So I heard. So we set out, wandered through the provinces. Everywhere we went, she got in trouble and we pulled her out. And then one day they captured us. The Imperial Secret Police. Me, Ark, Sarit, and Yennefer. Imperial Secret Police? Mm-hmm. We were separated, and they questioned us. Long and thoroughly. But it was uneventful. No violence. That's how I met Vatia de Rideau. And a couple of weeks later, the Emperor himself. Me. A simple witcher. What happened to Yennefer? I don't know. Never saw her again. The Emperor offered me a mission in the Northern Kingdoms. As for Yennefer, I had the feeling she was somehow important to Emir. As I see it, they learned of the Lodge from her. Those Imperial spooks have their ways. All I heard is that Vatier had his men watch Yennefer closely throughout the time she was at the palace. Then we went off to slay the kings of the north. That's where my knowledge ends. So she's in the Empire? She was when I left. How did you know where we'd find the Wild Hunt? Every Witcher who wears the Viper around his neck knows the place. We had so many books and scrolls about the Hunt that I used to think our school was found very purpose of solving the riddle of the Spectral Riders. Know who they are. You know the true identities of the Riders? From what I understand, they're some damn elven race. But they turned out to be a big news. The legendary Omen War proved to be a fairground attraction. No Market Square mage could possibly conjure up a cavalcade of wraiths speeding across the sky. Then there's the Amnesia. No, there's something more, I assure you. Go ahead, enlighten me. I can tell you want to. There are a lot of legends and myths about it, but the Wild Hunt is a fact. I've fought and killed many of its wraiths. They were spectral emanations, the avatars of real riders. The riders we ran into by the hanged man's tree. 
Are you telling me you were carried off by elves? Real material sons of bitches like the ordinary kind we deal with in this world. They may be ordinary in their world, but they're strangers in ours. The conjunction of spheres, know the theory. Do you know how monsters appeared in our world? There's not a witcher who doesn't know that. So you know there are other spheres. The most powerful of our mages can open passages between these worlds, and they usually do that to summon the monsters we then have to hunt. The elves we saw come from another world, and they weren't summoned. They found the way on their own. It's not exactly easy, so they usually send their spectral emanations. They come in person on special missions. As they did for you and Yennefer. So elves from another world and their trained wraiths. What do they want from you? I've got an idea. But that's not your concern. How did a Witcher agree to kill humans at another human's bidding? At the Emperor's bidding, Geralt. And he's no ordinary human. The rulers of the North come up to about where his Pauline's end. Why? Simple. He promised to rebuild the School of the Viper. The Witcher's order where I came to be. Witcher's schools in the South fell into ruin long ago. Witchers themselves became internal exiles, banned from entering most cities. Besides Seret and Ox, I know of two other witches of the School of the Viper who should be alive and on the path. I don't know where they are. Haven't seen them for years. Now they can come out of hiding. They can come home. Why are you still here? Why did you wait for me this time? I knew you wouldn't give up. I knew you'd pursue me. And I don't aim to hide anymore. Fact is, only you know the truth about me. Well, and a couple of folks whose word isn't worth spit anymore. I never saw you as a foe. I want to go my way. But if I have to fight you first, so be it. The story ends here and now. Care to tell me what it was all about? Hmm. Kill as many rulers as we could. Lay the blame on the sorceresses. Breed chaos. Prepare the north. Soften it before the invasion. And you know what's incredible? We could not have imagined more fertile soil. No matter what the war's outcome, the northern monarchs will accuse one another, pursue their God-given rights, seek vengeance and be at each other's throats for years to come. The north resembles a whorehouse on fire, as your friend Dandelion would say. So much, in fact, that I actually got her gander up a few times. I made sure a few potentially trustworthy witnesses saw us together. Could link us. Security in case I was captured. I also prepared to assassinate the King of Kavir. Esterad Tyson was to be the first victim of the mysterious assassins. But before I could do the dirty deed, Sheila asked me to slay Demavend. The gods had smiled upon me. I couldn't believe my luck. Here I'd been trying to figure out how to frame Sheila. 
And now all I needed was to carry out her orders and follow through. Where'd you get your information about the Lodge? From the Emperor and Vatir Durido, the Emperor's chief spy. And I believe they got it out of Yennefer. She recovered her memory? Nah. I'd never claim she informed on her friends consciously. I expect they found a way to tap into her memory in spite of her amnesia, and without her knowing it. There was a sorcerer present when I was questioning. A young, proud intelligence officer. Whatever the case, they gave me a list of the sorceresses in the lodge. Only Emir, Vatir, and I were present. Only we knew of the mission. How did you manage to slay them then? Sheila's magic. I mean, she could give us the king's every move. His habits, the positions of the palace guards, anything. All we had to do was navigate the labyrinth and land the final blow. Besides, she had plenty of gold for the preparations. Greased palms abundantly. It had all the makings of a cakewalk. But it's never that easy. We barely avoided our pursuers. And we wouldn't have if not for Yarveth Skyatel. Another of Sheila's ideas. With Yarveth's elves, not only did we cut down Demavan, but traveling with them put us out of the Lodge's reach. We could calmly plan fall tests and Hensel's assassinations. How did you know fall test would come to the Monastery's solar? Yorveth and I planned fall tests murder. The King of Temeria would have to deal with the Lava Lead sooner or later, and he made no secret of it. I was sure he'd want to recover his bastard children in the process. And where do they take the children when a castle's under siege? I had to become a monk, but I couldn't just arrive at the monastery and claim I'd seen the light. Not very believable. So one of Arian's patrols out in the forests happened on a Skyatel unit torturing a helpless monk. Arian's brave men drove off the elves and I found shelter in the monastery. No one noticed you had no wounds? I paid the monk who treated me a lot of arms to stay silent. Actually, it was only a loan, because I killed him later. Only the dead can keep a secret. Then all I had to do was wait for the situation to develop. When I saw you enter the chamber with Faltes, I thought I might fail. Luckily, you failed. To recognize an old friend. When did you decide to get rid of Yorveth? As soon as I realized I couldn't manipulate him. A true fox, that one. He was so observant, so dangerous. I got the sense he might see through me at any moment. You made a mistake. You were untouchable as long as the Scoyatel were protecting you. Maybe, but with Yorveth, my hands were tied. If I'd finished off Kieran... But you didn't. You had allowed me to try the wedge between you and you to flee. And I let you live. You know I could have killed you. You're forgetting. No, I remember. When did you decide? As soon as. But you. And I let. No. So Sheila was looking for you when she came to Flotsam. Mm hmm. She thought she was still in control and wanted to get rid of me. I'd bet my eyes that she thought I'd lost my mind. And the North descended deeper into chaos. Exactly. There was just one problem. You. I could have killed you in the Elven Ruins. Thing is, you weren't really my enemy. You screwed up with Henselt. Sabrina's curse tore that down. First off, we got holed up in that hideout in the ravines. Then Sheila showed up and started watching Henselt like he was her own ass. By that time, his death was no longer necessary. Fate had smiled upon us again. 
I learned of the summit and the efforts to reconstitute the Council and Conclave. The ideal setting for the mission's grand finale. I'm done talking. Let's finish this. What a fight. Any vodka left in that bottle? A swig apiece. Here. Fortune brings people together. Very shortly, the North could be united like never before, thanks to you. But that's just not my concern anymore. I'm not your foe. I never was. Let me walk away and I will. You'll never see me again. Force me to fight. And this time I'll kill you. Your death won't change a thing. Go where you will. Just like that. No threats. No words of wisdom. Are you going or not? <sighs> Farewell, Geralt. The Witcher had traveled far and wide in search of the Kingslayers. Along the way, he had met both the Righteous and Scoundrels, Bernard Lerito amongst the latter. Lerito sold Flotsam to Kedwin and scattered the local non-humans to the Four Winds. Flotsam became a military base. Its civilian population was resettled. In Edern, the Witcher witnessed Saski of the Dragonslayer achieve a great victory. The Pontar Valley, previously Upper Edern, became a promised land for outcasts who dared dream of freedom. Even sly old Zoltan Chive came to believe in this land of bliss. Yet dark times approached for the architects of the New Order. Dark clouds had been gathering over Temeria since Foltest's death. Stripped of its king, the land was like a rich cloth which nobles began to shred. These minor scavengers, however, scurried off in fear when true predators reached out for their prize. The summit at Loch Muin sealed the fate of Foltest's realm, when Radovid of Redania and Henselt of Kedwin divided it between them. A tempest descended on the north, at least partly the work of manipulative mages. 
it seemed the turmoil in Temeria, Edern, and Kedwin would benefit them most. Common folk turned against sorceresses and all magic freaks, witchers included. Castles that had hitherto welcomed mavens of the magic arts now shut their gates to any who sought shelter there. A witch hunt ensued. It was a time of great uncertainty, of rape accomplished by royal decree. Yet as troubled as the day seemed, we, who had in some way shaped the world's fate, finally received some respite. Zoltan resumed the quest for his beloved's hand, and I lay my head in the laps of the muses. Who could have known this tempest which had ravaged the north was but a harbinger of darker days, and the preamble to an entirely new tale of Geralt of Rivia?
Thank you.